All right, guys, this is Steve with Fly Fly Drones. We're coming at you with another video. It's been a little while since we've done anything. Wanted to make sure we were doing something that was of high quality. So today we're going to talk about modding the Mavic uh, with the latest firmware using the mix and match method. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take out a couple components on the latest firmware. Uh, we're going to roll back, update to it using that. And what we're going to end up with is uh, moddable aircraft on the latest firmware. Um, and so it's going to be pretty cool. I've done this on my own. Uh, it's going to be something I think it's going to become pretty big. Again, do this at your own risk. Overall, the process is pretty simple. We're going to download two firmware, 700 and the latest 4.0. Uh, download the firmware flash tool, download 7-zip. We're going to open up the uh, latest firmware with 7-zip, delete a file out of it, uh, and then basically flash back to 700 and then that. So let's jump into it. Let's download the two firmware, Dumbledore, and then 7-zip. So go ahead and open up a web browser. Uh, you'll find some links in the comments here. First thing we're going to do is go to GitHub. Uh, you should probably know this uh, this place by now. This is where all the uh, the firmware is stored. So scroll down, find the Mavic 700 firmware. We're going to go ahead and click on that. You'll see there where it says View Raw. Go ahead and right click, save file as, save target as, save link as. It might be a little bit different in the three different web browsers out there, whatever they are. That's going to let you to save the file, save it to your desktop or another uh, convenient location. Okay, go back to the uh, the parent directory and then find the firmware that you want to update to. In this case, I'm going to pick the uh, the latest firmware, the uh, the 4.0000. So go ahead and select that. We're going to right click on that view raw. Again, save link as, save target as, save file as. That's going to allow you to download the uh, the whole firmware file. Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to download Dumbledore or Drone Z-Break. Again, the, uh, the GitHub links will be in the comments. Over there on the green button, click that where it says download zip. Right click, save file as, save target as, uh, whatever your... your web browser is telling you to do. Save that file to your desktop or whatever that location is. Uh, and then pop open another tab or go to Google and Google for 7-zip. 7-Z-I-P. It's kind of like WinRAR or RenZip. Um, it's a pretty cool little tool. So it'll bring you to the download page. Download the one that you need. In my case, it's the 64-bit uh, the one. Go ahead and choose yes. Uh, you'll see up there it downloaded. Go ahead and just get on the, uh, the download there. Let's install 7-zip really quick here. Go ahead and hit yes for setup there. Go ahead and close the, uh, the web browser. We're done with that. Uh, so we're done downloading. We're going to go ahead and extract Dumbledore, and then we're going to edit that, that firmware file, the, the most recent one. Um, so go ahead and open up that Dumbledore folder, or uh, file, excuse me. Extract the folder out to the desktop. That'll be the tool we use to flash. Uh, and then go ahead and open up 7-zip. Uh, within 7-zip, open up that firmware file, the latest one, in this case, the, uh, the, the 4.0000. Uh, within this, you'll see a whole bunch of files. You want to find the one that is the 305 and the 306. Select those and hit delete on the top. Those are the flight controller files. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the, uh, the 700 flight controller files persist when we update to that. So now we're ready to flash. Uh, pretty easy, we're going to open Assistant, we're going to click on the aircraft, we'll load the firmware, ignore the updates, then we'll open up Dumbledore, load the firmware in there, uh, we'll close Assistant, we'll flash it once it's done with the file copy process and it starts the update, then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open Assistant back up and we'll watch the, the flash process there. So this is kind of my, my process of how I like to do the flash. Usually it works out pretty well. So in this case, I open up Assistant, wait for the uh, the Mavic to show up in the background there. I went ahead and opened up the uh, the Dumbledore folder. And so what I like to do is I like to wait for this to, to load the firmware. Uh, if it gives me the NFC warning of the database update, say ignore. I leave the Assistant open here. And I actually open Dumbledore and I load my firmware file. So go ahead and load up the, uh, the 700 firmware. Again, we're going to roll back to that one first. And then go back to Assistant and close Assistant. Come back to Dumbledore. I wait 1, 1002, 1003. Then I hit Flash. Uh, it'll prompt you and it'll say, hey, we're going to copy this over. It's risky. Um, and so we do that. So I went ahead and uh, sped up the file copy here. Usually it takes one to two minutes. Uh, if it errors out, try it again, guys. I go ahead and click OK there. And once you're done doing that, you can go ahead and close Dumbledore, close the folder, and then go back to the DGI Assistant. 
And if we, uh, we get in here, we should be able to see the update do its thing. So uh, go ahead and open up the aircraft. And then this page will load for a second and we'll uh, see it do its thing. Uh, again, if you get any prompts here for uh, database updates, anything of that nature, just go ahead and click ignore. Always say no when it says update. Uh, it's a good rule of thumb. Always say no when it when it comes to updating. Um, in this case, actually, uh, the assistant was hanging on me just a little bit. Um, so, <clears throat> if you if you see that, just give it a second. Um, uh, what's happening a lot of the time is the update will be going on in the background, uh, but sometimes between the first, I don't know, one to eight percent, the update won't kick in. So a lot of times I see that it, it actually waits until about eight to fifteen percent. Don't worry, just be patient, let it do its thing. Um, I went ahead and did the update here. I sped it up so that you don't have to see it, uh, or wait for it, sorry. If it gets stuck at 99%, uh, what I like to do is I like to do the RC test. So basically, we're going to turn on the remote control. We're going to see if it connects to the aircraft. If it connects to the aircraft, that means the update is finished, uh, and we're good to go. If it doesn't connect to the aircraft, then it's still going. So uh, basically, just go ahead and turn on your remote control here. You'll see here that it's connecting. You can see my aircraft there. On the assistant, you saw that it was stuck at 99% for the update. Everything looked good. It had actually sat for a minute or two. Um, so I turn the remote, GPS mode kicks on, but it's still stuck at 99%. So this is a good remote test. So this means that the, the drone is done updating. If it's still updating, it won't let us connect the remote control. So this is a good test. Go ahead and shut the remote down. Um, within the assistant, you can actually go ahead and click the back arrow, go back to the main screen. Uh, you'll still see the aircraft there. Just go ahead and load it back up. It'll just reload the firmware, and then you'll notice that it's got the uh, the updated flash firmware. In my case, the 3.0700. So that works successfully. Uh, here's my screen recording again, just hitting back. Click the uh, the aircraft there, and again, the uh, the firmware version is going to come up here. It's going to be just fine. You're not going to have any issues. So um, yeah, again, so that's a successful rollback to the 700. So at this point, now what we want to do is we're gonna update using the, the latest uh, firmware, the one that we just deleted the two modules from. So we're gonna use the same process as before. Uh, in this case, I didn't even close the system after that update. I just opened up Dumbledore. Uh, I load my firmware file. Again, this is the one that you just edited in 7-zip and that you deleted those two modules from. Um, so go ahead and open up Dumbledore. Again, close the assistant, uh, tell it yes. Go ahead and hit flash. Going to go ahead and copy it over again. Usually, this takes one to two minutes for the file copy process. Um, I've sped it up here so that you guys don't have to wait too much. Uh, once it's done with the file copy, go ahead and hit OK. Uh, at that point, go ahead and close Dumbledore. Uh, no need to keep it open anymore. Go ahead and then bounce over to Assistant. Uh, let it connect to the aircraft. Go ahead and click on the aircraft and then let it load up the firmware. Um, in this case, it, it caught the, uh, the firmware update pretty quick. I went ahead and sped this up again by about 10,000 so that we wouldn't have to wait. Um, it got stuck at 99% again. I did the RC test and I'm good to go. So I went ahead and uh, went back. I go back to the main screen, reconnect here. Uh, we'll see that it loads up the, the new firmware. In this case, it should be the, uh, the 4.000, and you'll see there's a minus sign behind it. So it successfully flashed to that, but it didn't install the flight controller module for that. Uh, and so we're good. Uh, do your little happy dance. So now you basically want to go into the assistant and change the parameters. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that again real, real quick here. Uh, so here's the steps uh, to open up the DGI folder, open up the main.js, open it in Notepad++, uh, where it would generally say the, uh, the dev tools line there. It's got the two comments out. Uh, you basically remove those, you save it, save it as administrator. Once you're done there, you go back into assistant uh, and everything should be good. So if I open up Assistant here, I should get that, uh, that dev console on the right over there. Go ahead and put one in for the debug value. I can then connect to my aircraft. Again, it'll uh, try to load the firmware here. Probably not uh, that important. Go ahead and scroll down to um, the parameters. If you're prompted there for the no-fly zone database update, again, say no. Always say no to updates when it comes to, to DGI, unless we got a special way to do that. So um, I'll go ahead and just run through my, my favorites really quick here. Um, we'll check out and see what we can see for sport mode, normal mode, um, obstacle avoidance mode, as well as the height limit, the wind warnings, and those different things. Um, and when I was going through here, you'll actually notice that some of the value is already modded. Um, and so I was actually, when I did the video I went in, I pre-modded it. Uh, I forgot to uh, 
record the video, um, and so I had to kind of put it back together. So, But you'll see here basically that we're on the latest firmware, and then as I go through, I can see all these options, and I can modify all these exactly as I need. So it's basically as if I was on the 700 in terms of all the parameters, and so that's great news. Uh, one of the other notes that I'll show here is uh, I'm not including the no-fly zone stuff, you guys. There's other videos on that. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sharing that anymore. You know, there's a lot of people that are using it irresponsibly. And so, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. If you find it, you know, uh, be my guest. But uh, let's focus on just, uh, you know, getting up on the ridge line and uh, going a little bit faster. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, at this point, you're really done. So go ahead and close assistant, um, tidy things up, uh, do a compass calibration, uh, calibrate your IMU, you know, fly safe. Again, this is an experimental process. Not many have done it unknown risks. Again, use it at your own risk. Um, thanks for watching, you guys. Take care.